The sign of Jonah. Was Jonah really swallowed by a fish? Or is it just a fairy tale? What if I told you the story of Jonah is not only true, but also an amazing prophecy of real world events? Jonah was an 8th century prophet who lived in a small town near the Sea of Galilee. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, but he got on a ship headed in the opposite direction instead. Jonah refused to preach to the Ninevites because he knew that if they repented, God would forgive them. And the Ninevites were Israel's sworn enemies. When a storm arose threatening to sink the ship, Jonah confessed his guilt and offered to sacrifice himself to save the rest of the men on board. Jonah 1:14. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they threw Jonah overboard. The Bible tells us that God had prepared a giant fish, not a whale, that swallowed Jonah whole. Jonah 2.2 2. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. After three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, Jonah was coughed up on shore. Then he obeyed God, better late than never, and went to Nineveh. Jonah 3, 4 and 5 Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. The people of Nineveh repented, and their city was saved. So just to recap, Jonah lived in a town near the Sea of Galilee. He was in a storm. He offered to sacrifice himself. The men on board the ship said, Do not hold us accountable. He refers to Sheol, or the grave. He is in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. He rose from the grave. He preached forty more days until destruction. Jesus was also a prophet who lived in a town near the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was also in a ship in a storm, which he calmed with the word from his mouth. And he also offered his life as a sacrifice for the world. Matthew 27, 24, and 25. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. The people were accountable for Jesus' death. Matthew 12, 38 to 40. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. So what is the sign of Jonah? For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So when Jesus died on the cross and then rose from the grave three days later, it was a miracle, a supernatural sign to anybody who knew the story of Jonah. It proved without a shadow of a doubt that he was not an ordinary man. He was the Son of God. But the sign of Jonah didn't end there. Matthew 24, 1 and 2. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. The temple was destroyed by the Romans 40 years later in 70 AD. If you go to Jerusalem today, you can still see the giant stones of the temple that were thrown off the Temple Mount. Not one was left standing. 
The sign of Jonah isn't just amazing, it's a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? I'd love to know what you think. Leave a comment and share this video with someone.